Hello guys and welcome to our channel. We all are aware of the fact that in the past few years, Saudi Arabia's agriculture development is astonishing. Large areas of the desert have been turned into agricultural fields. This transformation can definitely be called a major accomplishment for a country, especially when the country receives an average of about four inches of rain a year. In today's video, we're gonna tell you how and why Saudi Arabia is turning its deserts into huge farmlands. So stick with us and let's dive into today's video. Saudi Arabia is called as a desert kingdom. The country's wealth soared when oil was discovered. It utilizes billions of dollars of oil earnings to fuel many aspects of its economy and the lives of its citizens. One of these elements is the kingdom's food supply, which imports more than 80% of its required food using oil revenue. Approximately just 1.5% of Saudi Arabia's land area is arable. And what agriculture the nation does have consumes 80% of the country's limited water supply. While the kingdom is now food secure, agriculture in Saudi Arabia has been a key focus for those looking to increase the country's sustainability and mitigate the danger of global food supply network failures. The 1970s marked the beginning of serious agricultural development in the kingdom. And by the 1990s, Saudi Arabia was one of the largest wheat exporters in the world. Not just wheat, it also exports vegetables, fruits, dairy, products, and dates. Now, just think of Saudi Arabia. What comes to your mind? A scorching sun, inhospitable climate, and endless sand dunes? But how does such a country become such a big exporter of wheat? If we dig into the details, there is something going on in the country. Now let's find out. The government launched an extensive program to promote modern farming technology. The reason being the establishment of irrigation networks, storage, and expert facilities. Also to encourage agriculture research and training institutions. Huge circular greeneries are all across the country. And they are farmable in the middle of the desert as well. Surprisingly, in the past 60 years, Saudi Arabia has transformed 24,000 square kilometers of desert into fertile lands. About 10,000 years ago, Saudi Arabia was a land of rolling grasslands and forests watered by torrential monsoon rains. But now engineers have tapped this ancient water to meet the water needs of the country. This fossil water was trapped in aquifers as deep as one kilometer below the ground. These tactics paid off well. Saudi Arabia used this water for farming and milk production on a large scale. Conservation of energy and water isn't needed for a proper irrigation system. One of the best ways for this purpose was the century pivot irrigation method. Luckily, Saudi Arabia used that. This method was created by a farmer from Colorado named Frank Zybach. As the name highlights, the center pivot irrigates in a circular fashion around a central pivot point. Not just water, but these pivots are capable of supplying herbicides and chemical fertilizers. So by using a single piece of machinery, the overall efficiency of the irrigation system was improved. Saudi Arabia has been building central pivot systems for 50 years, but Arabian Peninsula receives very little rainfall. The aquifers have nearly emptied. When we talk about the western mountainous region of Saudi Arabia, most rainfall flows back to the sea unused. This means Saudi Arabia is suffering from water loss and this also affects the agriculture. But to meet the needs of its people, Saudi Arabia plans smartly and has brought agricultural lands in US, Indonesia, Argentina, and other African countries. If we look into history, when urbanization and modernization increased, the government made the Bedouin tribes to settle in one place and due to overgrazing there, the fertile lands were converted into rocky desert. So, two royal Saudi princesses initiated a development project in these areas that was led by Harvard University bioethics, Mona Hamdi, and Stanford University permaculturalist, Neil Speckman. They lived among Bedouin communities for eight years and built rock terraces, checked dams and shallow ditches in the land to trap water. Unfortunately, the funding was cut in 2016 and the whole project was in danger. But in 2018 and 2019, rain fell again and the whole area turned into a savanna. The mountain terraces trapped water and gave life to the soil. After that comes another project. The country launched the Al Baida project to manage the flood water that was directly going to the sea unused. If the entire west coast is covered under the project, then 30 million acres can be transformed into agricultural lands. But this will cost billions of dollars in time. Positively, the agricultural capacity of Saudi Arabia could be multiplied by a minimum of six times, which will increase the GDP up to 5%. It will be helpful to reverse desertification, as carbon gases will again be fixed to fertile soil, and this will result in rainfall in the region. To supply the population with fresh water, 
Saudi Arabia is using another tactic. That is to use desalination plants to desalinate the seawater into fresh water. One method for desalination is by using thermal gases, and the other is by membrane-based reverse osmosis, which runs by using electricity. This electricity is harnessed by nuclear power. So before you get confused, let's simplify it. To make a land green, we need water, and for water, we need to desalinate it. For desalination, nuclear energy is required. All of this is interconnected. Facilities have also been put into place to treat urban and industrial runoff. For agricultural irrigation, Liquid nano clay, or LNC, serves as another important tactic. This is being used nowadays that can save water consumption by 50%, but it is quite expensive. LNC is a treatment that gives the sand a clay coating so that it can trap water effectively. Saudi Arabia has also allocated financial resources for agriculture research purposes to further improve its agricultural system. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comment section what you think about Saudi Arabia's agricultural system. Be sure to like the video and share it with your friends. We'll be back soon with another amazing video. We'll catch you later.